Dr. Peter Glidden here, your steadfast advocate for health. We just had Mother's Day, and apparently the internets are abuzz with the talk about breast cancer. Let's break it down by the numbers, pull back the curtain, and show you what's really going on. One of my favorite phrases, you are welcome to your own opinion, but you are not welcome to your own set of facts. According to the United States government, about 1 in 8 U.S. women, 12%, will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. In 2016, an estimated 246,660 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in women in the U.S., along with 61,000 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer. That's a total of approximately three. 100,000 new cases of breast cancer in the United States in 2016, 300,000. Interestingly enough, breast cancer incidents uh, began decreasing in the year 2000 after increasing for the previous 20 years. Breast cancer rates dropped by 7% from 2002 to 2003. The most probable cause of this 7% reduction in breast cancer is that women stopped using hormone replacement therapy after uh, a large study called the Women's Health Initiative was published in 2002. These studies correlated the use of Premarin and breast cancer who prescribed Premarin, the MDs. For women in the U.S., breast cancer death rates are higher than those for any other cancer, with the exception of lung cancer. Besides skin cancer, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among American women. In 2015, it's estimated that just under 30% of newly diagnosed cancers in women will be breast cancer. And the World Health Organization estimates that by 2020, The incidence of cancer in the United States will be one of every two women. Now, what does this mean? This means that while we have let the medical doctors be in charge of the delivery of medicine here in the not-so-free 21st century, breast cancer is getting worse. Breast cancer survival rates, according to the SEER uh, data and the data from the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, after five years, approximately 22% of women diagnosed with breast cancer are still alive, which means conventional cancer treatments for breast cancer are 78% ineffective, 78% ineffective. Cancer treatment, generally speaking, for everybody across the board, not just women, but all types of cancer. Years ago, the American Cancer Society stopped using the word cure, and now they talk about a five-year survivability index, which means that if you are diagnosed with cancer and you die from that cancer five years and one day after your diagnosis, you go into the record books as a successful treatment. This is just one more way that the cancer engines around the world, the cancer treatment engines around the world, fake out the consumer. Oh yes, we have a very good survivability with breast cancer. This means you're still going to die from breast cancer. It's just going to take you five, six, seven years to die from breast cancer. And over the course of that time, according to a study published in Pharmacoeconomics 2009, the journal Pharmacoeconomics in 2009, the cost of treating breast cancer in the U.S., a synthesis of published evidence. Their conclusions were that the cost of treating breast cancer over the course of a lifetime, from the time that you're diagnosed until the time that you die, ostensibly from breast cancer, is anywhere between 20000 to 
thousand dollars, twenty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars. Let's split the difference. Let's say the average cost sixty thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand cases of breast cancer expected in 2016. New cases of breast cancer in 2016. When we multiply three hundred thousand times sixty thousand. That's a staggering $18 billion, $18 billion that the cancer industry will profit on the backs of people who have cancer and this in the delivery of treatments that do not cure the cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time we all collectively woke up and snapped out of it. The people that developed tamoxifen, one of the drugs that cancer patients use to manage their cancer, not to cure the cancer, a very expensive treatment. Those people are in large part responsible for Breast Cancer Awareness Month because they are not attempting to get you aware of breast cancer so that you can prevent breast cancer or cure breast cancer. They're trying to make you aware of the pharmaceutical treatments for cancer. Now, remember, we don't have a problem with drugs. It's not the drug, it's how it's used. Thank God for Novocaine, right? Thank God for a few of those antibiotics, not bad in a pinch. It's not the gun, it's how it's used. It's not the drug, it's how it's used. The way that medical doctors use drugs to treat cancer makes their cancer treatments unsuccessful. The majority of women, the vast majority of women who are diagnosed with breast cancer will die from breast cancer, will die from breast cancer. And alarmingly, the rates of breast cancer have gone up remarkably from the 1920s until today. What is the cause of this remarkable increase in the incidence of breast cancer? Well, MD-directed medical treatments. We don't have a free medical market. The only medicine your insurance pays for is MD-directed medicine. The only medicine they practice in your hospital is MD-directed medicine. Most probably the only type of medical treatment that's legal for your cancer is MD-directed medical treatments for it. And that's who all the research money goes to as well. Now, your medical doctor may be the nicest person God ever created, but your medical doctor is not trained in medicine. Your medical doctor is trained in allopathic medicine. Allopathic medicine is one tiny piece of the pie of medical science, but it has been sold to you, the consumer, as the only type of real medicine. The American Medical Association and the pharmaceutical industry have gone out of their way to paint naturopathic physicians, homeopathic physicians, acupuncturists, Ayurvedic practitioners, traditional Chinese medical doctors, and everybody else who's not an MD as a back-of-the-bus quack with substandard training. Meanwhile, under their watch, the incidence of cancer has gone up nearly 300% and no cure in sight. Are you okay with that? You shouldn't be. When you do the 5K march for breast cancer, when you do the walk for breast cancer awareness, the money that you raise goes to the organization under whose watch breast cancer rates went up a remarkable amount and under whose watch there is no cure for cancer in sight. If you're okay with this situation, you need your head examined. It's time we all call the spade a spade. Listen. If you have a bullet in your arm, go to the medical doctor. If you have a laceration that needs stitches, go to the medical doctor. If you've been hit by an automobile, go to the medical doctor because trauma care and surgery when it's necessary is their wheelhouse. But if you have cancer, the last person you want to bring your body to has an MD after their name. In my book, The MD Emperor Has No Clothes, which is available through Kindle for $9.99. You can download it to your computer right now. I have 10 questions in my chapter on cancer that everybody who's been diagnosed with cancer needs to ask their physician, their oncologist, in the presence of a recording device and a witness. Doctor, can you cure my cancer? 
If you can't cure my cancer, what can I expect? What are the side effects of the cancer treatment you recommend going to be? Can your cancer treatment give me cancer? How much are you going to profit from the sale of this cancer treatment? How much is the hospital that I'm going to get the treatment in going to profit from my cancer treatment? I'd like to speak to 10 patients who have the same type of cancer, who have been treated by you for more than five years. I'd like to see what the quality of their life is going to be. What are you going to do? How is the quality of my life going to be affected? What drugs are you going to give me for the side effects of this cancer treatment? And what can I expect as far as quality of life is concerned? And oh, by the way, why after a trillion dollars of research are we no closer to a cure for cancer than we ever were? And aren't you more than just a little ashamed at recommending this type of treatment for me? We don't ask these questions because we believe that the medical doctor knows what's best for us. And this is the biggest mistake we can make in our adult lives. Your medical doctor may be the nicest person God ever created, but your medical doctor does not know what's best for you. Your medical doctor knows what your medical doctor has been trained in. And what your medical doctor has been trained in, allopathic, reductionistic, pharmaceutical, centrist medicine is absolutely horrible in its track record, in its treatment for cancer. They are the wrong dog for the hunt. Ladies and gentlemen, fire your medical doctor now. If you have cancer, ask the hard questions and seek out alternatives that work. I am your steadfast advocate for health. Dr. Peter Glidden, knowledge is power. Fire your medical doctor now.